What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Bar Mind Tech, and today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to be continuing on with the beginner guide, but we're not going to really be doing a full-blown tutorial. Today I'm going to be talking about some LXC containers that I think everybody should have in their home lab. Now, of course, it may depend on what you're looking to do with your home lab, but I think for the most part, the stuff that we're going to talk about today is going to be pretty useful for everybody that's watching this video. The chances are if you're looking to run a home lab, you're either looking to learn by running different projects or you're looking to lower your costs by paying for services by hosting them yourself. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. I'm going to be talking about some of the LXC containers that I run in my home lab that I think everybody should be running in theirs. So like I said, I'm not going to be going through a full tutorial of how to install and set all these up. I do have videos that relate back to all of them, so I will link those down below. If I do forget to link any, just comment or you could search the channel. They are on there. But that's enough of this. Let's get into my home lab and go through some of the LXCs that I think are going to be super useful if you're a beginner looking to build out your home lab. So here we are over in mini lab and this is my mini HP PC that I use for my home lab server. I did a video on this a while back if you're interested in checking that out. I'll try to remember to link that down below as well. But pretty much it's just a simple mini PC. It has some pretty decent hardware in it and it's worked really well as my home lab server. As you can see over here on the left, I have quite a few containers and services running out of it. And if you noticed when we were over here that pretty much all of them are coming out of the Proxmox helper scripts. So we are gonna to touch on that as well. If you're not familiar, the Proxmox Helper Scripts is a community project. I'm not a part of it. I don't help them work on it. I don't help them maintain it or build any of the scripts. So if you do have any issues with them, you should check out the GitHub or join the Discord and message them over there because they're going to be able to help you better. But if you're interested, they do have a ton of scripts. They have, of course, the post setup scripts, the post install scripts that we use in Proxmox but they also have a ton of other ones for setting up different LXC containers. If we come back over here to Minilab, you can see I have stuff like Vault Warden, Pi Hole, Uptime Kumba, MySpeed, my homepage, a ton of different stuff. So today we're gonna be talking about some of the LXC container projects that I think you should be running in your home lab. First one we're gonna be talking about over here today is Vault Warden. Over here we have the LXC helper script page. It's a really simple setup. It just needs to be installed of a, the script. And on top of that, you also do need to be able to sign a SSL cert or use HTTPS properly. And something like Nginx Proxy Manager comes in really helpful with that. I have a video as well with that, that ties in with the Vault Warden video. Like I said, I'll have links below. Vault Warden's really useful because if we come over to the website, it's just a branch off of Bitwarden. So if you're not familiar with it, Bitwarden is a password manager. It does have a subscription fee. And these people just kind of made a break off of it for Vault Warden to be able to store your passwords, secure notes, credit cards, stuff like that, logins that you could host internally and have a secure access to store with. The setup is really simple and it's something that you can either use locally. They have an app that you can put on your phone. You can have extensions in the browser and you can store your passwords or if you're somebody who's looking to start converting a lot of your logins to more secure credentials, you could do it very easily with that. You can access this over a VPN back into your house. So if you're out of your house and you need to access some stuff, you could do it that way. And the apps also keep a local memory as well. So it's not like if you leave your house, you're completely locked out of your vault. The next one we're gonna talk about is Pi-hole. I actually run two instances of Pi-hole as you can see. And I do that because my router can run with multiple DNS servers. I like to have a backup in case one goes down. I don't lose DNS in my house. We have the LXC helper script over here. Again, it's a simple install. You just need to copy the command and then run through it through the setup process. It's very simple and it installs Pi-hole in a very easy manner to use. Pi-hole is really useful because it is a DNS sinkhole, so you can block out the majority of ads, malicious sites, and any other content that you might be looking for. If you're interested, there is the website and you could read through all of it through here if you are interested. You could check out some videos, preferably mine. We're gonna jump through the order a little bit and over here is MySpeed. MySpeed is a network tracker. It could be used to track your internet speeds to your house. This is really useful if maybe you don't know if your ISP is always providing the right time or if you're trying to narrow down some times that your internet speed might be bogged down. We have the helper script page over here. It's a very lightweight container. We have the links to their website. 
and it provides a really nice UI. As you can see, this is a sample of what the page actually looks like. This is some of the sample tests. It's gonna monitor the network speed so you can see points and when it drops down and you could test it as often as you'd like. I've ran this for about a year or so and it is pretty useful because I can tell if my ISP is trying to throttle me or something like that and I can see where my internet speeds are dropping out. I also find it really useful because I do use this at one of my jobs and when some of my coworkers are saying, hey, you know, the network's really bad, I can pinpoint if it's more of their internet connection or ours or our server is. So my speed is very useful if you are trying to troubleshoot or just have an idea of a baseline for your network speeds. Sticking in the network category, you can see my next container is Uptime Kuma. It's just another lightweight container that I run. Simple script to install like the others. And all this is gonna be is pretty much a network monitor. So you can set different kind of checks, whether you want it to ping servers, physical hardware, virtual servers, if you want it to pull certain ports check for all kinds of network traffic types and it's going to give you a nice dashboard just like this and you can see we could have it so we can ping our router or we can ping different devices in our network over here is my uptime kumo that i'm running so you can see i'm monitoring my wireless access point my NASes, my mini lab and a bunch of the services that i am running in my house and in my lab we can have some graphs to map out the data and over here you can see we have something that's going to mark when it's down when it's up and if i look at some of my servers it's not showing the graph anymore but let's say if i was to re resume the service this is something that's not going to be running you can see now it's trying to reach out and it's pulling the port for what 5m was running on which is 30120 it's going to attempt a certain amount of times and then I have it set to run to Discord to let me know, hey, this service is down. I'm just gonna pause this again so I don't get flooded with alerts. But Uptime Kuma is very useful when you start getting multiple services run in your lab and you just wanna keep track of when stuff is up or down. Again, sticking with the networking and something that I mentioned before was Nginx Proxy Manager. This is a network proxy that if you're running services that have HTTPS needed and you get the security warning, you can run through here and be able to apply the SSL cert needed so you no longer get those security warnings. So for an app like Vault Warden, this is going to be something you're going to need to do so Vault Warden knows you have a secure connection and will function properly. It's also useful if you notice over here, I have no security warning for the HTTPS. And if I come over to the lock, I have a secure icon and it's verified by Let's Encrypt. And that's because I have an SSL cert on my internal domain I use. It's available on the Proxmox helper scripts. It's a pretty simple install. I actually broke mine that I run in my house and I locked myself out of the account or something along those lines. So it is working, but I can't really show you anything in it because I can't get in. But Nginx Proxy Manager is definitely a very good LXC to have, especially if you want to get rid of those annoying security warnings or have secure connections for the apps that do need them. Next, we're going to move over to Homepage. Homepage, of course, is a LXC container. It is pretty lightweight, but it does have a good workload in the background, and that's because this is all done in YAML. So after the setup is done, it's all command line driven, and you need to go into this specified YAML file or the config file, and you need to go in there and write lines of YAML code to configure it all. If you're a patient and you can get it all done, you can have a homepage similar to this. And I have a video where I cover how to set this all up and go through the configuration process and all of that. I will say this is a very tedious container to set up. It took me probably four hours in total between getting the widgets working. And you can see a lot of them aren't working right now because stuff broke. I do really enjoy having a good homepage. I've used probably four or five different ones, and this has been the one that I've liked the most. If I didn't have homepage running right now, I'd probably be using Homor because that was another simple setup for a very decent homepage. Again, it's available on the helper scripts, and you just need to run the script to build out the container. We're starting to get more outside of the common ones that you might be having, but one that we could be running is something to go along with Plex, and that's gonna be Tautuli. I believe I'm saying that right. Here's the page on the helper scripts to do the setup. Just like all the other ones, you just need to run the script, go through the prompts, and set it up. 
And then we have the web page over here. If you're not familiar with this is pretty much if you run a Plex server that you can go through and you can link your Plex to it and it'll, it'll connect to the server. And if you have multiple users or anything else that so you're trying to see who's watching what or what movies or shows are actually being watched on your server, you can track that through here. So here's some screenshots of what it does look like. So you can see if you have multiple users, here's some of the data that you would see. So you can see who's watching what, how long they spent watching, and you can see some performance of our server. So if you're trying to narrow down maybe time points when the server is at high resources, this could be a tool to use it. I have been using Tatuli for quite some time. I don't check it all the time, but it does come in handy if I'm trying to get some additional data out of my server. Another one to mention that I don't currently have running as an LXC, I still have it in Docker because I haven't moved it over, is Overseer. Overseer is another one that can go along with Plex and it's gonna be pretty much a request system for your additional users. This works really well if you have friends or family on your server and you don't wanna to have to keep handling their request of, hey, can we get this movie or something like that. We can come see the UI and pretty much you can search through and see different TV shows, movies, whatever it might be. And it would just say, hey, somebody on the Plex server is looking to be able to watch this and you can work to get it. I do really like having Overseer because it's been a really good tool to cut down on the back and forth of, hey, can we get this movie? Can we get the show? Whatever it might be. Everything's handled in the background and I have it all configured with Discord notifications so I can monitor who's requesting what and see what's going on with that. Again, it's just another install and if you ever need it, they have guides on here and I'm pretty sure I've done a video of this as well, so I'll link that down below. Some others that I've worked with that I don't steadily run in my home lab, but I do like to have them is Image. Image is another container that can run. If you're not familiar, it's really good if you're looking to get away from the iCloud, Google Photos, maybe Amazon Photos, and you could host them all yourself on your own server. It has a app that can go on your phone, you can browse to it on your, on your computer, and you can upload your pictures directly to it and store it on there and have a nice online cloud of sorts to save your pictures to. It recently joined the club of having its own helper script. Actually, it looks like it was back in the end of May. I'm late to the party, but it's joined the party too. We can come over to the website and you can see it has a really nice UI. I've done a video on this as well in the past when it was still only in Docker, but it looks like the dev team and the helper scripts were able to make this work. I personally really enjoy having an image. I use it on my phone to back up my pictures. And like I said, it worked. And this was something that I really liked about it because when I was looking to get away from the, the iCloud backup idea, this was one of the really good contenders because it worked well. So if you're looking for something to get along with that, this is a really good option. I'm going to jump back and I forgot one of the other networking ones, which is Cloudflared. If you're not familiar, Cloudflared is a option through Cloudflare where you can tunnel out a service. So if we come over to the documentation, you can read through it on Cloudflare's site, but pretty much what you're able to do is link it through your home lab. You can link it to the services you're running. And let's say if you need to be able to access certain stuff like your image server, you can securely tunnel it through Cloudflare to be able to access it on the outside. I do this with some of my services that I share with my friends. It works well for web traffic. I can't say if it's going to work for game servers or something similar. I'm pretty sure it sticks to 80 and 443 for the web ports. It might have changed since I originally looked at it, but it works really good for something like Overseer or Image or something similar where you just need to be able to web out to it. It's going to give you a secure connection and it works well. Bezel is another container that can be very useful. It's a similar idea to Uptime Kuma and MySpeed, but it offers a little bit more as you're able to link it to the different virtual machines, such as the containers, Linux machines, and recently Windows machines that you run in your environment. It's a monitoring tool, so it can monitor the hardware usage, the system temperatures, and the si similar to that, of course, you're not gonna be able to really monitor temperatures on a virtual machine but on physical machines it can such as your actual proxmox server when i made the bezel video i actually got flack on it by one of the viewers because they felt that i spelt bezel wrong when bezel is actually spelt like this from the developers if we come over to their site you can see here's the ui it's very sleek and modern looking and it gives you a lot of information and data out of it it's very good if you're somebody who's looking for very detailed 
information on the services or machines running in your home lab and this is something that one of my friends uses all the time i don't want to drag this video out for too long but i'm going to mention another one which is going to be apache guacamole apache guacamole is another lrc container you can run which is pretty much a remote management tool so when you really start building out a home lab environment and you start having quite a few systems and you don't want to have to remember the ip addresses the ports or if you're tired of having 25 different safe sessions in your putty or your secure shell of choice apache guacamole is a really good option it is a very good tool for remote management because it's not just ssh you can also do vnc and remote desktop if you're interested in kind of seeing a demo of it i have a video which i will link below this is a really good tool like i said if you're somebody when you start building out a pretty large home lab and you need to have nice access back and forth it's just a good way to save all the connections and make it a lot easier especially since it's accessible through the web browser the documentation doesn't really seem to have a lot of pictures but it does have a video and like i said i have a video too so it'd be a lot cooler if you go and watch that one i think this is going to be the majority of containers that you should have in a home lab if you're really looking to run stuff especially when you start getting more services going as you can see, the majority of my home lab is LXC containers, and that's because they all have their different purpose and use in my home lab. I think that's enough of rambling on about these different LXC containers, so I'm going to wrap this video up over here. Like I said, I think these are some must-haves if you are looking to build out a home lab, especially if you've been following along with the series, you probably start to have a really fully functioning Proxmox server, but you may not have a lot of stuff running on it yet. These could be a really good start if you're looking for some services to run in your home lab and they're relatively simple to get going. If you are looking to get some of these going and maybe you're looking for some more detailed information or a guide or something to see how they will work, I'm going to try to remember to link all the videos down below and you can go and check out the video of what it looks like, how to set it up, and how it works. Just so you have a little bit of a further idea of these different LXC containers. So that's that about the LXC containers. As always, I'll have links down below to all my gear in my home lab if you ever want to check it out and get some for yourself. I'll have a link to the Discord server if you want to join up and chat with us over there in the community. As always, I want to thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next video, and as my buddy Don would say, hack till it hurts.